Tyler Smith has been playing left tackle for two games. Two games. He's looked very solid those two games. He looks like an NFL left tackle those two games. But let me ask y'all this. Jason Peters is healthy. For shits and giggles, let's say Tyron Smith is healthy, okay? Do you keep Tyler Smith at left tackle or do you put him back at guard? I'm going to give you a lengthy just kind of talk about this, just to kind of give you my stance on this. I'm just going to be looking at y'all's comments to see what y'all got to say about it. Then I'm going to look at Will Steele and we're going to talk about it. Tyler Smith going back to left guard has nothing to do with Tyler Smith, in my opinion, right? I tweeted just a little bit ago, V-O-C-H-L-O-M-B-A-R-D on Twitter. I was like, you shut down the maximum potential of your offensive line by putting Tyler Smith at left tackle and keeping him there. Why? Because you got three left tackles now. We're just assuming everybody's out. Let's just assume everybody's out. You got three left tackles that can play. And none of them dudes play right tackle. So let's just take that away. Plus, Steady Steel is playing fine. Cool. This is your pool. If I told you that you had to maximize potential with those three left tackles, I would ask you, what would you do? None of those gentlemen have experience playing left guard, but Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith is a guy that you planned on being your left guard, especially for this year. They called him a left side player, right? So it could be guard and tackle. You know what I mean? Just don't put him on the other side. Cool. I even think Tyler Smith has the ability to transition from left guard to left tackle. Now, this is my big problem here with the, with the people that I've been talking to on social media, right? And, I, and not problem, but this is the reason why you can't leave Tyler Smith at left tackle. One, because you caused this car accident, this traffic, by not involving Jason Peters or Tyron Smith. But the biggest, most egregious part, let me get my music ready. Matt Forniak ain't ready. Well, still. Yeah. If you had Ron Leary at left guard, would you leave Tyler Smith at left tackle? Yeah. Yep. Of course you would. Of course. Right. 100%. Because look, this immediately turns into, yo, we good at left guard? Cool. Hey, if Tyler Smith, let's Dak Prescott, Tony Romo this shit. We're ready for the future now. We got two old men. How old are they, Will, still? 40. Hit the button. Oh, okay. Button. okay. I'm a man. I'm 40. Two, two, you, you got Jason Pease that's 40, and Tyron Smith's body is 40. You know what I mean? <laughs> He he he, thirty one, but shit, he tired. That man exhausted. Tyler Smith's bo- Tyler Tyler Tyron Smith's bones. I'm a man. I'm forty. Bones forty. So, if Ron Leary was your guard, and you feel good at guard, and you got a stud at guard, and you feel great at guard, Tyler Smith at left tackle makes a lot of sense because now you can go, yo, let's move and set. Let's just keep you in the fire just to get you ready for the future. You're the future now. And these other men, this one-year contract that Jason Peters on for $38 and a, and a bag of chips, Tyron Smith, he ain't making that much in terms of starting left tackle money, but, hey, it's just probably time to move on from him from, from him anyway. If it was Tyler Smith, um, Ron Leary, uh, shit, Biotish, if that was your left side, I'm fine with that, Will Still, When I say maximize potential, I mean of those three left tackles, the one that can play left guard is Tyler Smith. He would look fantastic at left guard. Not only, not only would he look fantastic, he'll look better at left guard than he would look at left tackle, right? I, I know we, I know we speak with a lot of optimism about Tyler Smith playing left tackle, but let's just be clear. That's by way of what we expect. That's just our our expectations, right? If we didn't expect Tyler Smith to play left tackle and we just didn't see the the film of him in Tulsa at left tackle looking funny and we didn't have the idea of Tyler Smith playing left guard, if it was just straight up and down Tyler Smith, we would grade him differently. But 
We said he would be fantastic at guard, and then he worked out at guard, and then he preseasoned that guard, and he was whooping ass at guard, and now we forced him at tackle versus two gangsters, so we're grading him on a curve. Tyler Smith for what we expect of Tyler Smith. We think highly of him, but as I did my offensive line grades, Will Steele, we do him every single week. Tyler's about the third best guy. Possibly the fourth best guy. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that he's playing horrible. Not saying that he's playing bad. He's pulled some assignments to where he got to play against Shaq Barrett and Trey Hendrickson, two gangsters. But we are grading him on a curve because he's a young rookie tackle that we thought was going to play guard. But if we, if his name was Cam Irving, Will still, if his name was just simply Cam Irving, right? He was just playing left tackle. He was Cam Irving. We'll go, hey, you're doing a solid job. Good job. If, if his name was Tyron Smith, what we getting from Tyler? If his name was Tyron Smith, we'll go, hey, need, I, I need a little more from you. I need a little more from you. You understand? So when we grade Tyler Smith, we're grading him on a curve. We're grading him on that rookie curve. You want to know who Tyler Smith playing way better than? Fucking foreign yet? Way better than him. So to maximize my potential of my offensive line, you take Jason Peters. If you take Jason Peters' 2021 film versus Tyler Smith's left tackle 2022 film, Jason Peters is the better left tackle. Tyron Smith, when he's not going out, is the better left tackle. If you look at, and, and look, and, and they could be a little bit better than left tackle. That's fine. Whatever. How, how you, they could look a little better than Tyler. It's whatever. Cool. But Tyler is about five times better than Matt Fournier. Maybe six. So in my mind, and this is only my mind. Y'all ain't got to agree with me. I just want to know y'all thoughts. In my mind, to optimize your output, your potential output, it got to be Jason Peters, Tyler Smith, Yadis, Zach, steady still. Will, what's your thoughts on what I said, sir? Well, you kind of left out the, the 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 biggest thing in all this, right? Is that they're talking about, well, not talking. I mean, let's, let me pull it up for you. Let's get back up. Right. Yes. <laughs> Jason. I forgot, I, yeah. The, you, what, what do they say in this industry? Uh, bury the lead. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> Jay, did, Jason was, Peters is doing some left guard thing. Just because both those dudes on the offensive line at the same time, that's not maximized potential. And the only reason I would think that Jason Peters, now, let's let's look at this two ways, Will Still. Yeah, we could be looking at Jason Peters as a left guard while um, Tyler is at left tackle, of course, right? But what if this turns into a, all right, so what if what if in the next game, Foreign guy gets hurt or something, then we need something to happen, right? You know, then maybe we'll, you know, if something happens to Tyler and Foreign Yak and McGovern don't come back, then maybe you'll want Jason Peters. Left. Like if this, if this picture was taken in super emergency context, maybe, right? Yeah. Or if maybe, or if maybe something happens with uh, Terrence on the right side and with Lesko and Ball not ready, maybe in some emergency situation you would want to put Jason, right? So that so that could be a thing, right? In an emergency, Jason could be there. Yeah, it, yeah I look, I've called it moving Jason Peters into guard to me feels dramatic um, mm. be, because I felt like you you didn't bring him in there to play guard. Now, here's a question, and we're, we're just talking, right? We're trying to talk this thing out. Here's a question. Yeah. I, I would love to ask somebody down there, maybe it have to be inside stuff because they would never leak this to the media for real. Um, somebody that's actually watching these practices when, when Jason is out there. Sure. Is Jason, and I'm not trying to start nothing. Don't run this nowhere. I'm just asking questions. Is Jason not looking right at tackle? Jason Peters not looking up to snuff at tackle as much as they wanted him to be. So they're like, hey, since, you know, he's... I'm a man! I'm 40! We, we, we're going to figure something else out, and the next place to be is, is the position where you have the most liability right now, and it's Matt Forniak. And don't, don't get it twisted. Anybody saying Matt Forniak's playing well is wrong. He leads the NFL in pressures across the entire line, and he has 12 pressures allowed. 11 of his 12 pressures, I think this is very underrated, come from true pass sets, meaning mm. we're taking out screens. We're taking out play action rollouts to the other side. Drop back, half the block. He's given up the most pressures in true pass sets. That can't happen. So you got to find a different solution. Is it 
Jason? Is it McGovern? Is it Tyler Smith? And I think it all comes back down to two things here. One, this is a good thing that we're having this conversation. I don't want people to forget that. The fact that Tyler Smith has played well enough to make us have this conversation is a good thing. You know how Cowboys Nation get it. They want to pit everybody against each other. You know I mean? Let's not do that. This is a good thing. Two, it's about a developmental side. Some people are all about the development, and then some people want to get the best five out there. Sure. It's hard. It, it, to me, I'm all about, I want to win now. Yeah. But I see the developmental side. So the developmental people, are you willing to be okay with having a liability, because that's what Forniak is, a liability on the interior for the name of development 12 months down the line? I personally think I saw, one more and I'm done. I personally think I saw Tyler Smith do enough to be like, all right, cool. That is something to build off of. Now let's put you back where we drafted you to play <laughs> and, and put out the best line. Let's see if I can make this make a little just a little bit of sense. D Town texts G in the chat box says, "Disagree, Vice, with a thumbs down." Tell me why. I'll be looking out for your uh, for your uh, comment. If Tyler Smith struggles with anything, it's the mental side, right? Mm -hmm. So think about offensive line in this way: you have position, guard, and tackle, and then you have the side that you're on, left and right. So let's just talk about changing sides, right? And changing size and changing. Okay, watch it. So going from left guard to left tackle, right? Tackle to guard, guard to tackle. That's more of a physical need. Going from left side to right side is a mental struggle. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, oh, I got to change my mechanics. So going from left side to right side, I got to change my mechanics. I got to change my placement. I got to change the way things look. I got to change the way my hand is, right? Guard to tackle is simply... Okay, well, can I wrestle this dude here or can I move quick enough here, right? So when I saw people say things along the line of, oh, well, are you stunting Tyler Smith's growth by moving him from left guard to right, uh, from left guard to left tackle? Tyler Smith is physically impressive enough to play tackle on an island and to wrestle people in a phone booth at guard. He's physically impressive enough to do both, which is why I like the left side player designation. Yeah. That's what they called him, left side player. The minute you go from left guard to right guard, then your brain needs to make a switch. We don't want Tyler Smith thinking. We just want Tyler Smith to be the physical guy. And let's let's not forget. I mean, I, I feel like because, you know, he's a first round pick and we're all rooting for Tyler. Mm -hmm. Your franchise quarterback is out right now mm. because of Tyler Smith. That's just facts. And I love Tyler Smith. I love the potential. But because he didn't get off the ball, he was still hand in the dirt. Sure. The rest of the offensive linemen are up firing. Shaq mm -hmm. Barrett's getting shot out of a cannon. And mm -hmm. then he reacts. And it's too late because he's not even even with Shaq Barrett when he gets up. He's, sure. past, he's past Tyler Smith. Dak can't step up into a throw. So he has to drift one second, gets it out, hand comes down. And now, I understand that's a freak accident. But right. what caused it? There's always a cause. It was sure. Tyler Smith. So I uh, love Tyler, but I saw enough. Let's build off of it now. Getting back in there at guard so you can fortify the interior. You cannot have pressure come into the quarterback's face. Cooper Rush had pressure come into his face like three or four times in that game because Forniak. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And, that, and that's my biggest problem with this whole thing. That's my biggest problem with this whole thing, bro, is that Forniak is not ready just yet. <laughs>